Hello and welcome back to another weekly reading vlog or a week of my life. Thank you for joining me. I am so happy to have you here again. Let's dive into this week right on. I am home for a couple of days so I could potentially get a lot of reading done but for some reason I really really feel like wanting to play an old game again. I don't know why. I played World of Warcraft a lot, like a lot. My heart kind of got stuck with Lord of the Rings Online and for some reason I really want to play it again. I still have to finish uh, these two books as part of my August reads. This is After Lord of the Rings, one of the most I feel like influential fantasies of our time. This is old but this has formed the epic fantasy world as it is today. I have started making my September TBR, most of it up here. Torna is going to a, be a, a group read, reading with, and we are going to have The Last Name Sarah and Slaughterhouse Five. From one of my prompts, we have uh, The Seven Deaths of Evan Hardcastle. Um, the last piece is going to be a Once Upon a Book Club book with some gifts to open up. Um, Other Earth and Historically Inaccurate, I wanted to read. Then we're going to continue with The Wheel of Time. I'm going to continue with Arc Enemies. I'm actually eight so you can see eight people eight different colors i'm reading forest of souls with lucien then i also have here ask again yes and die schöpfe der wolken by marie grashoff i got a book box from drachenmond verlag which is a german publisher they have beautiful covers the books just feel good and i want to read them and i think i got it end of 2017 and i still haven't read most of the books that I've got in the box. So I'm kind of trying to like get them, like prioritize them. I'm going to read dry. As always, I'm excited for this reading month. Before I dive back into Renegades, this just came in the mail. It's the BB by Boutique box. It is a Korean skincare box mostly, but we also get like one item that is like an accessory or a tool or something. I think I'm paying around 30 euros. It's being actually shipped from the US. What I like about this is compared to other boxes, like a beauty box, boxes that I get in Germany. In here we have full-size products and the quality is cool. Wish upon a star. Under the Sea is the August box. They are actually also doing a mask box with nine masks that you're getting every month. I had that for a while and I love it. If you want to do that, there's a code. It's called Try Mask Maven. K-Beauty has a lot of natural ingredients such as pearl powder, seaweed extract and marine collagen that are all inspired by the ocean. These fresh and moisturizing skin care and sheet masks will keep your skin glowing all summer long. Tool is a brush. It's supposed to cost six dollars. I'm actually really disappointed in the accessory or tool. Pearl Memory Hair Water Essence. Tangled hair don't need to care with this olive oil extract hair mist. Not only is this product great as a hair detangler and hair relaxer, but it is extremely beneficial for your scalp health and can be used as a heat protectant. That is actually really good. I love this. To promote hair growth, mist directly on scalp and massage for three to five minutes. It smells nice. This is 300 milliliters and this is supposed to cost ten dollars. Deep marine collagen soothing gel. It's like a jelly <laughs> pink gel with a high concentration of hydrolyzed marine collagen and botanical ingredients. This lightweight anti-aging gel leaves you feeling fresh and hydrated without that sticky leftover film. Apply both in the morning and night after using your cleanser and toner. This is for your face. Mix to any serum or cream to enhance your benefits. 300 grams. This is supposed to cost $12.99. Absolutely fair. We have a lip mask. Nature Republic Aqua Collagen Solution. It's a marine hydrogel lip patch. This is supposed to cost $5. Absolutely okay as well. A small item in big packaging. This is Real Fit Lip and cheek orange. Kitty haters could buy with this long lasting high definition lip and cheek tint. It has coral pigments to create. 
create that beach sun kissed look. Apply a modest amount of product on lips and cheeks and blend using your fingertips in a tapping motion. This is supposed to cost $12, by the way. I don't feel like they have like a creamy product on them. It feels like a matting product, like a primer. I don't see much color. And last but not least, we have Candy Rock Pro Powder. Use a brush applicator and apply around the eye area to look and create your desired look. This is like a $8.50 pearly eyeshadow. The brand is called 16 Brand. I like the way it sparkled. This is not the best quality. I'm a little bit disappointed this time. Let's clean up and then dive back into Renegades because I am excited to see what's going to happen next. I finished Renegades finally and I am loving it. So Marissa Maya was a really hit or miss for me. I, with this one, she did it right. She did everything that I was looking for in Heartless. She did right here. There's a hero and a villain side, but even on these polarizing sides, there's no clear good and bad. There's no clear who's who because everybody is torn with their like decisions and their backstory and everything. So it all becomes a big question mark. There's a lot of social criticism in here. There's a lot of foods for thought about being a hero. And I love this message. The plot line was a little bit foreseeable, but it was still enjoyable. I'm usually not a superhero type of reader. I don't enjoy Marvel, DC or anything, but here here it was done so well and I enjoyed it so much so I am super super pumped to dive into the next one right away a few moments later the fairy loot just came I still haven't received an answer for my last fairy loot the little tray that was in there that was actually really cute was broken and it was obviously broken already when packing the theme of the month is let the games begin which is such a good topic for me we have a book sleeve that's already coming up and i feel like i've already received this book sleeve something about this just doesn't feel new to me i like having a zipper and it feels like really good quality it's a leia and um, elias book sleeves that actually is one of my favorite series in ya fantasy as well next item is the golden egg bath bomb this is done by little heart gifts it smells really good rumor has it that when you use the golden egg bath bomb in your bath mer mer people sing out the clue of the second try wizarding task small package we have a my current situation could be adequately described as a suboptimal it's an aurora rising not a big pins person but this is a cute product a scythe magnet Meh. this is a bookmark and this is a me and mr Ki a kindly kindly bookmark this is actually really nice it's like metal this is a little bit scary it has a tassel this is a notebook and it's looking really slick i am loving it monsters are only as real as stories that grant them life this feels really high quality. It's a Prince Dracula hardcover notebook. Oh wow, look at this. And then we have Mia. So last but not least, the book. We have a fairy bookmark. Star Daughter. Look at this beautiful cover. That's a little bit boring, but look at the inside of the dust cover. That's pretty. It has golden, like, sparkly edges. It's the letter from the authors on this artwork. Oh, next month is Under the Sea. That is not for me. I'm not a mermaid type of person. It's not an exclusive cover. It's just that the artwork on the inside is exclusive and that it has shimmery sprayed edges. Our featured book of the month is Star Daughter, a contemporary fantasy that is magical blend of stardust by Neil Gaiman and Hindu mythology. Interesting, intriguing. We were hooked from page one of this unique story and were constantly in awe of all the celestial settings. Am I intrigued by this description? No. The night sky holds many secrets. It holds uh, Sheetal Mysteries' secret the closest, a secret that explains why her hair silver of starlight or why some nights the stars called Shilo by name. Stars like her mother who returned to her place in the constellation Pushia years ago. Since that day Shilo has been forced to hide. I think it's time for a nap or something and then going back to finishing the Wheel of Time. I've been 
reading dry for non-stop for a couple of hours now. Bye Bye Neil Schusterman is a dystopian catastrophe book that is looking at climate change. It is playing in California and all of a sudden there is no water anymore. Um, after a few days it looks more and more like the promise and the um, things that they were hoping for that would help them get water are not necessarily happening. It is very very dark, very real. I've been reading it as a buddy read with Ilva. If, if this wouldn't have been scheduled for a buddy read, I would probably read this in one sitting. It is so gripping. I was able to like dive into this world right away. It is very graphic, rough. It, what we've seen over the past couple of months was a pandemic. We've seen people act out and we've seen the worst and the best in people, but the situation never was as grave as we need this in the next couple of hours, in the next couple of days, or everybody's gonna die. It really touched me in a couple of uh, situations where I was like, oh my gosh, no, I am hooked. I'm so hooked. I'm now on page 190, so this is pretty much halfway. And now I'm waiting for tomorrow to read the next bit. Until then, I'm starting to dive into Shadow, The Shadow Rising. We're reading today's portion. Let's get into Arc Enemies. I am really looking forward to this one as well. I really got into Arc Enemies well. I'm getting into The Shadow Rising surprisingly well. Super interesting start. It feels like I'm watching a TV show that is over 14 series that after the third season still has no conclusion tidying up and finishing up something and i'm still absolutely loving dry we finish a dry today i kind of wish i can i could um finish arc enemies today as well i started watching away on netflix all right the owl crate just came and the topic of the month is written in the stars the first item is quite heavy as well. We are made of star stuff and it is 250 piece metallic push pins. It's cool that it's a star shaped bottle, but I don't need simple like silver pins. It's a star shaped pen. It feels really soft. I actually like how it writes. This looks like a bandana, dreamer bandana scarf. It is really silky. Uh, the dream chooses the dreamer. It is a little bit stretchy but only a tiny bit, which is perfect. I think the color is nice. Next, we have a Yushin Brighter Than Any Constellation in the Sky. It's an Aurora Rising inspired clipboard. I don't have much in this size to, to write on. I like it, it's, it's a nice product. Then we have a book sleeve. Um, I already know who this is going to. Last but not least, as expected, it is the Star Daughter. I think this is not an exclusive. But this is an exclusive cover. Which one do you like better? Do you like purple or golden? We have a letter from the author, which at least is different. Then we have dark purple spray edges from the Owl Crate and golden shiny sparkly. The end pages in the Fairy Loot edition are really stunning. And then we have a pin. I actually love the pin. I'm going to continue watching away a little bit, um, have another coffee, and then I'll finish up today's portion in The Shadow Rising. Tell me which um, of the Star Daughter versions do you prefer? Which one do you like better? Which of the boxes did you prefer? So finally taking some time to create the book box for Sarah. Here's all the gifts that she's going to get. Already excited, trying to pack everything up, making my notes in the book. There she can open up her first gift. But let me talk about dry while I pack up the first gift. So I finished dry and even though I really, really loved the beginning, I was a little bit disappointed with the end. I felt like it was just taking it a little bit far. I would have liked to see like the social aspect play out in in a different area called rush like oh let's have like a climax of like the worst and then let's try and get to a point where we wrap up in a couple of pages and tell like how it is after a couple of weeks it felt like a 
an ep episode of a TV show that has lasted over like 10 years or something where you want to see where your characters end up. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars because of this disappointment of the ending, but other than that I did really enjoy it. I finished Arc Enemies. I only gave this 3 out of 5 stars even though I loved Renegades so, so much. It just didn't do it for me to put down a 4 star. What I loved about Renegades so much was the blurry lines between good and evil, heroes and villains, and learning that not all heroes are good and not all villains are just bad, and that there's a lot of gray area in between, like what motivates people and how different motivations can be seen differently. I loved how it was addressing that in the first book and it was doing that really well. In the second book, I felt like this topic, it wasn't really taking a back burner, but it was taking a little bit to extremes. It wasn't portraying the gray area as much, but it was showing one side go all the way to the other side of the extremes. Then we had the underlying romance in the first book and in the second book, it kind of started to be a little bit like, come on, do you really like, is that necessary? The only other thing is I feel like the first half of the book was kind of slow. I I just didn't feel the same passion because it was all like this relationship between these two characters and the romance and keeping me afloat was um, the characters of Oscar and Ruby, but more so Oscar. I love him. The last half was amazing, but it still had the blurred lines sh just shifted, not blurred anymore, but shifted. So yeah, in the end, I enjoyed it. it the way it ended and the last half and, and then the ending makes me really want to read Supernova as well. I'm finishing probably this week on page 200 in The Shadow Rising. I am enjoying this book already more than book three. Today, I have two books on the schedule. Um, I'm probably not gonna finish both, but I have one book um, as a physical copy and that is the last piece. I know nothing about this, but I'm assuming this is more like chiclet. Um, it is from the adult Once Upon a Book Club and you can already hear something in here broke. I reached out to Once Upon a Book Club and they are sending a replacement. The Once Upon a Book Club has four gifts and all of these gifts have the page numbers on them and um, you get to open them when you reach the page. This one is most likely going to be a nostalgic gift. It's just in an envelope with nostalgic gift. I mean like it's not something that they purchased for us. It's something that they created like they printed out a picture that is supposed to be the photo a photograph that a character picks up or something. Something. We have three gifts that are of material value. And we have a letter from the author, which is always nice. And then what I also love is that they uh, take a quote from the book and they create these beautiful postcards. The other book that I'm starting today is going to be Warcross by Mary Lou, and I will be reading that as an audiobook. One hour later. We are ready to open our first gift. It's page 47 and we're following several people within the same family, a mother, her three daughters. We have already had all these perspectives and then there's the husband, the dad. The parents are retired elderly and the mother has disappeared on a Monday morning really suddenly. The three daughters are completely different. They have very different lives, they have very different characters and it seems like they all have a very different package to carry. Probably the most uh, boring gift out of the three. In here is, it says she receives a an envelope and there's a photograph in there and she was hoping for a letter with like more information. And there we go, there's the picture. I'm gonna go grab something to eat and then I will probably read another 50 pages. Let's see. I have listened to 50% of Warcross on audiobook and I felt like, oh my god, I can listen to this in one sitting. It is 
so good. I feel like it's probably not objectively one of the best books, but it hits me in the exact right mood that I, I was craving for a story like this. It might become a five star because unless they really mess up with the story at one point, because it's perfect for me. This is going to be a good reading day. So I reached page uh, 97. On page 97, they're talking about a cafetiere and um, this is what's in here but broken if you can see that it's completely shattered but i do think that if intact that's pretty cool product in a book box so page 186 i am at the point of the next present this says that she held a clean tissue to her face she found her sunglasses in her bag and then held a clean tissue to her face oh actually not just the tissue it's sunglasses simple like tissues but the packaging is really cool i love this and then a thingamajig to clean glasses and then we have sunglasses probably cheap as sunglasses from asia but let's see they feel okay not the most expensive pair but it's probably good for one season and I think I like them on me. It's a sad thing that summer is pretty much over. I would like to test them out in the sunlight because they don't seem very dark. So we have another 120 pages to get to the next gift I think I'm going to make myself another cup of tea and then I'm going to dive into Warcraft. One eternity later. Page 304. I didn't expect how it plays out. It's not about like big twists and turns or something. It's not a thriller. It's not something where we expect like the shocker elevation or something. I just didn't expect it and it's breaking my heart a little bit. Right before this it's speaking about a jigsaw puzzle with one piece missing. I'm assuming that there's a jigsaw puzzle in here. This is really heavy. It has printed the missing piece on the back. It is a Monument Valley jigsaw puzzle. It's nice packaging, the last piece. This is a beautiful puzzle and honestly this feels like really nice quality. The ending really elevates the book for me a lot. It's hard for me to explain without going into spoilers. It just feels weirdly real because it doesn't feel like it is a forced happy ending. It's not like it's a tragic ending or something. I feel like there's one piece missing for me, an explanation for how one of the characters is acting. I'm actually ending up giving it four or five stars because how it all played out kind of elevated it for me. So I still have two and a half hours to go in Warcross. Just to finalizing the amazing package that goes out to Sarah. Just trying to rearrange things a little bit. This is what the book looks like. <laughs> All like the envelopes and the post-its that are marking a gift. And this is what the whole thing looks like right now. And I need to rearrange that a little. So everything actually fits. So I'm done packing and this... I'm, go I'm gonna call it for the week. I'm gonna go to bed, um, probably still listen for like half an hour of Warcross while falling asleep and then I'll finish it the start of the new week. It was a good reading week and I feel like I am set up quite well for the rest of the month. Um, I'm on track and even though I didn't finish Warcross, I'm good. I'm good for this m month. So get some sleep and dive into the next reading week. I hope to see you then. Um, until then, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up, um, hit the subscribe button, and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye! Hello everyone, this is Addie, Sissy's friend, and she made me a book box for the book Heartless by Marissa Maya. We've got to know the main character, Catherine, a little bit better, and she's now at the ball. The ball that is thrown by the King of Hearts. And right now, we met the Choker for the first time, and it says, open your gift. As you can see, the little gift is at page 33, and and unpack it now and it's a little button with a bunny on it one of the main characters or i guess you can say it's the main character but one of more central characters right now is a bunny who's the master of ceremonies so as i mentioned the next gift is only three pages away so i'm now at page 36 and open my next little present 
Okay. Oh, wow. That looks amazing. It's a Twix solid caramel. She is actually talking about solid caramel. And she is thinking about opening a bakery with a friend. And um, she's talking about how a salted caramel treat could be like the signature dish of her bakery then. And that's, oh, I love Twix. Twix is amazing. And of course, salted caramel is like the best thing ever. Hey there. I am at the next little present, which is on page 81. Kath is having tea with the Duke of Tuscany. I have a feeling what's in there. Oh my god, and it's marble. Oh, it's so beautiful. And it has a quote on it, and it says, kindness is as kindness does. And only two pages of the the first one of the night. I can open the next little package. It's page 83. They're talking about scones and how the chef always puts pepper in everything. And now I'll... Yeah, that's so good! It's a baby Nessie. And it's a tea infuser. Oh god, it looks amazing. Gosh, that is so cute! Now uh, look, my next best friend, Nessie. Thank you so much. Hello and good morning. It's quite early, but I started reading. I am at page 131. Kath came back from the tea party with the king. And now she's having a discussion over supper with her mother, who's horrible. And now the king is visiting. Oh, this is so cool. I think I should start baking today. And I have an idea. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I'm probably going to move out soon. So this is perfect. So I've reached the next little gift. We're at page 147. And uh, what happened so far is that um, Kath is now officially in a courtship with um, the king. He did not propose to her, which she is really happy about because she doesn't want to marry him. Now, after the king visited her and asked for her hand in courtship, uh, the joker, Jess, is waiting at her window and they're having a talk and now he's taking her to a tea party. like. A real tea party. Let's see what it is. But first, gonna open my present. This is so good. Oh my god. So in the book, it says he's playing with a deck of cards. This, this is a game. I don't know if anyone knows that. It's Werewolf. I'm playing this game like every possible occasion when there's a bigger group. I never had a set of cards for it. We only like played it like without cards. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Good evening. I am at page 162. They had been at the Hatter Sea Party. Did a magic trick and just disappeared. And right now he's back and they're all showing off their talents. Someone's just mentioning maybe there was something in the tea. Let's see what my little gift is about. Is Strawberry melon. So like, I've never seen that before. It looks like it's something American. I think it's to put in water. Oh yeah, it's flavoring for water. That's that strawberry watermelon. It's orange, natural lemonade, and this is raspberry lemonade. How the hell did you know that I'm actually doing this all the time? Flavoring water with syrup or like real fruit. This is just perfect. I am back again um, at page 190. So what happened? Kath went to the tea party, the Hatter's tea party, and then the Jabberwocky Jabberwock. I have no idea how to pronounce it. That crazy creature who's trying to kill everyone. That came and they got attacked and. Lion was taken away by the Jabberwook, Jabberwook uh, by that crazy creature. And now she's back home. And her best friend Marianne is went into her room and she was fully dressed and at the window. And um, she's trying to not tell her 
anything what happened, but we'll see how it turns out. She's definitely, or Marianne is definitely, she knows that something has happened, something's wrong. Oh yeah, it looks like a candle. Oh, that's beautiful. That's lovely. Wood cabin. It's, it said something about smoke and how it smells like it. So I guess that's perfect. And I have that one habit with a friend. She's called uh, Celine. She's amazing. She's been my roommate when I was in England. And we always light candles for each other on our windowsills in order to make, like to give the other a beautiful day the next day in the morning, the, like a little lucky charm. So yeah, that's just another fun fact. It's been something we've been doing for a while. It's just lovely. And you should try it out too. Good morning, everyone. I'm at page 255. It's the rock turtle. And there's this baking competition. And there was an accident caused by cast dish by the pumpkin pie she made. It involves a little turtle, which hurts me the most because I'm a turtle mom as well. So that turtle suffered and now has to live a very different life. Kath Ryan feels uh, very guilty for what happened. And also the king made a public announcement that he wants to marry her, which is also something that bothers her since she's not, she had a plan on becoming his wife. It says that I'm to open my next, yep. These are gift envelopes. This is so useful because actually it's my granddad's 90th birthday today and gift envelopes are perfect for birthday presents. So I think he would like the donut one, which is very, very cool. And as I've mentioned before, it's already the second pill package on that page. It's again 2016. And now she's talking about what kind of foods there on that festival. And she's talking about oil and garlic and applewood smoke stuff, savory meat pies, cinnamon roasted pecans, honey and crushed walnuts. Sounds amazing. And I guess there's probably something to eat in there. Oh, great. I love them. I don't know if I've already told you, but Three Bears is my most favorite porridge supplier. And this is one of my most favorite sets, cinnamon and apple. And this one is a Christmassy themed. It's also cinnamon and orange and apple, and it's, it's Christmassy like, and I've tasted both and they're both amazing. So I definitely adore them. Thank you! I'm at page uh, 216. Super exciting because there are two gifts in one page. I'm gonna open the first one now. Yeah, it's the day of the Turtle Rock, whatever it's called, festival and baking competition. She's making a pumpkin pie for the baking competition and that actually inspired me to do something with pumpkin in about 10 minutes. So I have to hurry up. This is the amazing gift. It's super big and it feels like there's a book in it. So I'm super excited. So it's a notebook. Oh, this is so good. I love stuff like that. So be starting a new job in October. And that's what I'm going to use as a planner for my job. So I'm at page 292 at the moment. Cap is at the theater with the king, chaperoned by Marianne and of course uh, Jess is there as well and he has to witness how she has to go on that date with the king even though she doesn't want but they both can't change anything about it. Jess is currently telling Lady Meryl that the Duke is in love with her. Kath is listening in on them. She hears paper cracking while she's in her hiding spot. Oh, this is nice. So these are stamps. I'm sure I can make use of them. It's gonna be so cool. Thank you so much. Hello again. I'm at page uh, 313. So she went to the theater with the king, like accompanied by Jess and Marianne. A Jabberwocky attacked and she got hurt. Her foot is broken and uh, Jess has taken her to a place which is called a treacle well and now they're talking about chess I'm gonna open a little present oh this is nice 
pieces of flower stickers and they've been talking about some wildflowers here in the text and definitely make use of them in one of my bullet journals or in my habit tracker thank you so much good morning everyone so I finally reached this present. It's on page 349. They're talking about nightmares and I'm excited to have a look inside here. I was in Wonderland themed with Hat Maker and it says every adventure requires first step, which is true. And since I am going to move out in December, I found a flat for myself. I'm gonna have an adventure very soon too. I'm very thankful for the little gift. Hello! I will keep this short because well, I'm obviously just hanging around um, after a quick shower. I want to continue reading because it's getting closer to the end and I'm at page uh, 370. I'm excited to look what's in here. Ooh, that is quite fitting because they've been talking about masks in there. Facial sheet mask. And isn't that fitting to my current state of just relaxing? It's perfect. I'm gonna put this on right away. I'm on package and on page 403. Looks like a scarf. It is a scarf. Oh wow, that's so cool. That's so nice. Beautiful. Thank you so much.